I tried to warn this man that 100 girlfriends would be the death of him, and even if the zombie outbreak isn't what does him in, the fact that by episode 7 and 5 out of 100 girlfriends in, a zombie outbreak more or less occurred. Yeah, he's imagining it as being all pleasant, but we have to really think about the fact that this isn't just going to be them fighting over kissing him. This is like wild beasts. They are going to literally probably rip his lips apart because of the, in, the intoxication that's going on with this drug girlfriend who's hooking them up and, uh, as we see, causing quite the ruckus. But I think the best way to explain any episode of this show is that you just can't believe it's real. It's the most unhinged, unfathomable, you, you, there's no way what I'm seeing is actually real. But goddamn bless this author because this is the most insane, silly, stupid show I think I've seen in a hot minute and I'm ready for the next episode. Full live reaction to today's what the hell am I watching episode over on my Patreon if you would like to see that, head on over there because they're supporting. This was, I mean, we knew we were getting a new girlfriend. It's a formula at this point. New girlfriend, next episode, bond with said girlfriend, bring in the next one. And honestly, it's pretty hilarious the fact that Rentro gets more nervous the more he brings in, yet the the harem in itself is just more okay with it. They're just pretty much like, at this point, it's whatever. Or they're just thrilled about it. Like, it's practical. Spread the love out. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. But it's pretty adorable seeing him just be like, oh god, is this gonna be the one that does me in? And then she just is like, I'm Kasuri, bitches. Welcome, I have the drugs. And like, quite literally, she does. I love how she's like, oh, I don't, I don't do meth, but you know what, I got, th I got this, you want to be hotter? Go ahead. Hey, literally, do you want to be hotter? And clothes are melting away, and I'm like, there ain't no way they're actually going this, this direction. What the hell is this rooftop scene? How is the rooftop even going to survive? Like, they're literally launching, essentially, missiles onto the, the rooftop because they're indoctrinated by this, like, love potion juice that makes you want to kiss the person, and they're breaking apart everything. How's that cat even gonna survive? Who's feeding the cat? I have so many questions about what the hell's going on on this rooftop. But I love the idea that a show that at face value is grounded in reality when you start it, you know? It's like, oh, it's gonna be a harem about 100 girlfriends. Yeah, it's whatever, but it's Earth, right? No, like, we almost immediately bring in a god, and then because of this, we can have a potion that lets someone manipulate their hair and the idea of like pulling him in romantically and then also being like, it's okay if I go bald. And he's like, well, yeah, it is, but you got really pretty hair. Never mind, I'm not doing drugs anymore. Say no to drugs, kid. Like, what even is this show? Now, I knew the punchline about this girlfriend. I mean, you probably know about the punchline if you just watch the opening. I mean, immediately in this episode, he passes by some busty beauty. The next day, literally, very it's not like it's going to be her kid or anything. Like, you can pretty much piece it together. But walking into the show, I did know about a girlfriend who had two forms. Like, something that looked a lot younger, and then obviously someone who was busting out of their top. And it's pretty hilarious the way he goes about accepting her love. Because initially what Rentro does is what he normally does with any of them. Tries to be sweet about it. Like, I don't want drugs in order to, you know, accept or deny. Like, I need to be able to embrace your feelings level-headed. Pretty sweet. Pretty, like, what you expect from him as a boyfriend. But I love the fact that his... This is, like, the most guy response he could have had. Because when she turns into her actual self, which she can only stay for an hour at a time from what she said because she tried to uh, do a little experimentation, extend the life, and obviously we see the side effects. As soon as he sees her in that form, he pretty much like smacks his head on the ground bowing saying, I would love to go out with you. It's like... He ain't even trying to hide it, and honestly, who can blame the guy? But goddamn, I just don't even know, because at this point, when you bring in a new one, you just know they're going to accept it at this point. So what is going to be each character's, like, twist on the formula? Because with the last one, it was kind of like the adorableness, or sorry, two, two of them back. It was kind of like the adorableness, the little sister role in terms of bringing everyone together and kind of giving her encouragement. With number four, it was kind of like, okay, very soft-spoken, very reserved, just kind of goes with the flow, but then leads into a cute little group date. This time, it's supplying the drugs, and I like the fact that, you know, at least one of them had the right idea to say, is she right for us? Not because of jealousy, not because of, like, I don't want to share my boy, it's simply like, she seems like she's a bad influence, she wants to supply us drugs, 
and quite literally. I can't blame them all for getting the thermoses mistaken though, because there's one that's ridiculously large, you would assume for five of them, and one that was a lot smaller. Granted, I do understand the color and everything and how she in her head made it be like, okay, this one's for Rentro, this one is for the girls. But the idea that you have one that looks like it can feed five and one that looks like it can feed one, it's no surprise they got it all mistaken. But honestly, I'm glad they did because now we get to see that, okay, if zombie kissing's on the menu, we're going to break the fourth wall. We're going to travel dimensions. We're going to do so much insanity and in a very... Gintama harem type way the show is going to be unapologetically wild and I think that's all that's pretty much what we're all here for at the end of the day they did sneak in a little quick moment of a kind of softer sadder backstory with Kasuri so basically when everything starts hitting the fan she flashes back and she thinks about how like everyone leaving her like she oversteps so very much she has something to overcome but I think if anything we all know very similar to any of the girls what's gonna happen she's going to find her place here and know that she can trust in it and it'll be very interesting to see where they go but overall I mean I do appreciate the fact that every character that gets introduced is legitimately a different personality you don't really feel like oh they're just so and so trait or they're just so and so copy and paste it again and again and again obviously it gets harder the more you introduce but in terms of the initial five they've introduced thus far, it is very solid. It, like, honestly, like, they all have a very unique personality, and I like how each of them challenges the other in different ways. Sometimes they just naturally click and they say, I'm going to protect this cinnamon roll. Sometimes they butt heads. Sometimes they go with the flow. But in general, they all have a different vibe, and I kind of like the idea of one just jumping in immediately being like, I'm part of the harem. I like this, and then everyone just has to accept it because, well, that's where we're at at this point in the show. I wasn't expecting the clothes melting at all and honestly I wasn't expecting her to just pretty much refuse to pull the shirt all the way down because she needed to huff Rentro scent. The most shocking thing though was what unlocked in Rentro when this girl admits to wearing diapers and uh, using the washroom right then and there. The fact that as I'm making the golden shower joke they then show the flowers being watered with the creepy principle. The fact that he is just like I can't He's, he's going to have every fetish in the book by the time this story's done. There's no ifs, ands, and buts. With the number of people that he's going to be attached to, there's no way he doesn't just say, you know what, give it to me all. And uh, this dirty bastard, he's, he's so down bad. And uh, I don't know, man. The fact that by five girlfriends in, we have a zombie kissing outbreak. Just give me aliens next week. Let's just, let's just escalate it to Bigfoot. Let's just get it over with. But let me know what you thought of this week's episode because uh, it's getting wild. It's... It's absolutely unhinged, and I'm here for the insanity. Let me know your feelings, though. Leave a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new around here. Of course, ring that bell so you get notified when I upload more videos to the channel. Like I mentioned, we have that full live reaction over on my Patreon if you're interested. And hey, while you're there, you also get a video shout out. So today we have Destiny Richard, Missing No Leader, Richard Diaz, Roman Ruby, Jade, Crystal Plays, and K Talk. So I appreciate the support. So until next time, everyone, please take care and have a good one.